Yesterday, the union representing WestJet pilots launched a strike authorization vote after saying talks have broken down with management over the past six months. So what does this mean for passengers who have trips booked in the near future? What does it mean for passengers in general? This morning, we are connecting with the president of Air Passenger Rights, Dr. Gabriel Lukacs. Now, thank you so much for joining us. Can you give us a sense of, of what these pilots are frustrated about? Good morning. Uh, my understanding is that, uh, as in any labor relations, uh, issues related to uh, wages and general working conditions. WestJet has been treating poorly not only its passengers, but quite apparently also its employees. Mm. So my first advice to passengers is to look at pilots and crew members and everyone who is potentially affected by this as allies and not as our adversaries. Yeah, you know what, that's a great point. Instead of being angry at one another, uh, you know, a lot of people are going through the trenches right now. Uh, we want to bring up Bill 327. Uh, it's an ongoing petition in the House of Commons. It's uh, gathered more than a thousand signatures. Uh, first of all, what is it, Gabor, and what will it mean? What are its implications? We have seen over the past year that the current system for passenger protection in Canada is simply broken. Mm. Um, Member uh, of Parliament, uh, Mr. Taylor Buckrock, put forward a private member bill, Bill C-327, to fix the problem, to harmonize Canada's passenger protection regime with the European Union's gold standards. That is now before Parliament, but as a private member bill, it requires a lot of support so it will become law. We began to collect signatures and we ask uh, everyone who cares about travel to consider signing it. Yeah, and I believe that's a lot of people thinking about travel. Uh, moving back to the WestJet strike authorization vote, if successful, this 15-day vote would set the stage for the bargaining team to call a strike following a three-week cooling-off period. Uh, that means the strike could be by the May-long weekend, traditionally a start of a very busy travel season. Uh, does this worry you? It, the worry is not the right word. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I support the right of uh, any union and, and workers to strike. Uh, but certainly it may inconvenience passengers and the question is what their rights are. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, under Canada's substandard passenger protection regime, for domestic flights, passengers will be without much uh, help in the event of a strike. WestJet would be required to rebook passengers after 48 hours uh, on flights of competitor airlines, whether WestJet would comply or not is a different question. But for international travel or travel from the European Union, the situation is different. If you have a flight departing on WestJet from the European Union, which is cancelled, WestJet will have to not only rebook you, but also to provide meals, accommodation, and a 600 euro compensation, because in Europe, a strike of the airline's own employees is something for which the airline is responsible. Mm. After all, they have to make a good deal with the employees, they have to treat, treat the employees well. Uh, even if you're not traveling from or to Europe, if you travel internationally under the Federal Carriage by Air Act, which incorporates the Montreal Convention, it's an international treaty that has a force of law in Canada, the airline is liable for passengers' delay incurred in, in international travel. And that would include possibly meals, hotels, lost wages, having to rebook flights on other airlines. So all that would be something wedged would be exposed to as liability and would be obliged to pay for. Right, so it feels like domestic travel might be a bit scarier for those who have it booked. Uh, last question here. Uh, back in January, the transport minister did say that the airline passenger bill of rights <coughs> is fundamentally flawed. Uh, do you feel like there's a hope? Is it getting any better? There's been a lot of discussion about this. We have been hearing some promises from the federal government. Uh, we have also seen something in the um, 2023 budget in terms of promises to make changes. Unfortunately, the minister has not been consulting with Canada's leading consumer protection um, organizations, uh, unlike the private member bill, which was in consultation with those organizations, including ourselves and the Public Interest Advocacy Center of Canada and the Option Consumer. The government seems to be just talking to its own stooges and the airlines and the airline industry, and that is a source of what we fear it's going to put forward. Uh, it may be coming any day now, uh, or maybe in a couple of weeks, we don't know. But what is clear that it is Bill C-327 that, in our view, Canada should adopt to bring Canada in line with the European Union's gold standards. Okay, interesting. Well, for more information on that bill and for more information about air passenger rights, you can head out to airpassengerrights.ca. Uh, Gabor, thank you so much for your time this morning. You're a wealth of information. Have a great day. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.